Hello and welcome to TechPlot 360 EX. This is the second video in our external flow getting started series featuring the Onera M6 wing. In this video we will introduce exploration tools like creating slices, seeding stream traces, generating ISO surfaces, and probing. This tutorial starts where we left off in the previous video that shows the coefficient of pressure on the surface of the wing. First we'll add a slice by clicking on the small box here and a volume slice will be added. We can move the slice by toggling on the button next to details and this enables slice mouse mode. We simply just need to left click and drag to move the slice around. To further modify the slice we go into details and this is where we can change our slice location or orientation, the number of slices, as well as the contour of the slice. Let's first change our slice orientation to be in the Y planes. And if we want to change our contour, we click on the Contour tab, click on this drop-down menu to change our contour variable, and if we don't see the variable that we want, we click on the button next to the drop-down menu, and it'll bring us to the Contour Details dialog. Let's go ahead and leave our contour variable as pressure and look into adding more slices on our wing. To add slices, we click on Show Start End Slices, turn off our primary slice, and rotate the view of the wing to better see our slices. We'll go ahead and make our start slice to be at zero, and our end slice to be at the wing tip. We need to toggle on the show intermediate slices to add more slices in between, and we'll say add four. This will add four slices between the start and end slices. We can now investigate three different types of stream traces, including volume lines, volume ribbons, and surface lines. We just need our primary slice for this, and we need to go ahead and change our variables for the stream traces by going into Plot, Vector, Variables, and we'll be using momentum because momentum has the same vector field as velocity. Velocity will be calculated in a further video. We need to relocate our slice to be at the wing tip, and we're interested in the wing tip because this is where the pressure differential causes vortex shedding. Let's toggle on stream traces and click on the button next to details, and this allows us to seed stream traces. To better visualize these stream traces, we can change the slice to be translucent by right-clicking on the slice, toggling on translucency, and we can change the opacity of the slice. For an even better visualization of the vortex, we can change the stream traces into volume ribbons. To do this, we go into the stream traces details dialog. Let's go ahead and delete the stream traces that we've made. Click on the drop-down menu and choose Volume Ribbon. We can seed these Volume Ribbon like we did with the Stream Traces. We can also change the color of the Volume Ribbons by going into the Rod Ribbon tab, clicking on Color, and changing it to something like Red. With Volume Ribbons, it's much easier to see how the flow twists around in the vortex. We can see them even better by moving the light source around by clicking on the sun image and clicking various spots to change where our light source is. We can also have volume lines with volume ribbons. So we can just change it with our drop down menu, choose volume line, and see them the exact same way. We are also able to visualize the flow over the wing surface. So let's go ahead and delete the stream traces. We don't need our slice on anymore. And let's go ahead and rotate our view. We need to change our stream traces to surface lines, and we seed them the exact same way we did with the volume lines, by left-clicking and dragging on the wing surface. As we seed more and more stream traces on the surface of the wing, we see that it resembles an oil plot. The final volume visualization tool we will be exploring is isosurfaces. So we can go ahead and turn off stream traces and toggle on isosurfaces. Isosurfaces are a great way to visualize a constant value of a contour variable as a surface. Let's go ahead and open our isosurface details. 
Let's change our contour variable to mock, and we don't see it on the drop-down menu, so we'll click on the button next to it and change our third contour variable to mock. And change this to large rainbow. We also need to change our contour variable from pressure coefficient to mock in the isosurface details dialog. We can define our isosurface at mock equal to 1, and we can change this value by using the up and down arrows. For fun, we can have two values of mock show. We need to use the drop down menu to change that to two specified values, and we'll have the second value at 1.2. In order for us to see these two isosurfaces, we need to turn on translucency by right-clicking on the isosurface and turning it on. Seeing these two values of isosurfaces allows us to see the shock surface where the transition between subsonic and supersonic is happening. The last tool we will discuss will be the probe tool, which can be toggled on using the sidebar or the toolbar up top. Next, we simply click various points of interest and all of the known information is shown on the probe sidebar. This concludes our second external flow getting started video. You can download a free trial of TechPlot360EX on our website and thank you for watching.